Whether it's on social media or through email, I love hearing from young people who are super passionate about a topic and with enough chutzpah to write me and tell me their story. And so I was very impressed to get a note from a 14-year-old named Alicia Aurora, based in Toronto, who is an advocate for mental health. And she's currently the youngest researcher at MIT's AI lab to diagnose mental illnesses through machine learning. Wow. Well, Alicia is joining us on the phone right now. Thank you so much for your time, Alicia. Great to chat with you. Well, thank you, Mark. It's a pleasure to be here. All right. Why don't you first tell us a bit about yourself, and then we'll dive into your work. (laughs) Well, for sure. Okay. Well, hi, everyone. I'm Alicia. So excited to be here. I'm a 14-year-old, just started high school this year, and I like to call myself a futurist because I really believe that, and I'm really passionate about making the reality that we all expect the future is going to be the reality right now. Because I truly believe, you know, the only way to become a billionaire, which I know everyone wants to be, is by impacting a billion people. And I truly believe that that's what I'm on a mission for. When I was in grade eight, I led my robotics team and it was all boys and I was a girl captain. And a guy came up to me from my team and he was like, Alicia, why are you even programming or coding when all you're ever going to be is a housewife? And from that day onwards, I was like, I wanted to challenge that. And I made, it, I made it my mission. I made it my goal to be like, no. I think that technology, it can be looked at as something so bad and something that's ruining our future. But I think that there's also an opportunity there, the opportunity to leverage technology to solve some of the world's biggest problems. And, you know, I've been doing that with, through my interest and curiosity with artificial intelligence. I got into it a couple of years ago and it really fascinated me, not just with the technology and not just how we're using it in companies now, but how we can use it to specifically solve issues like mental health, which is one thing I'm really passionate about. I've been doing that with my work through founding a nonprofit called the Hope Sisters. And it really taught me the power small actions have to make a huge impact. That also made me realize that if small actions have such a huge impact, then bigger actions can really change the world. (laughs) I love that. So with that in mind, Alicia, how did you end up researching at MIT's AI lab? And what is that exactly? Mm -hmm. So as many of you guys may know, um, MIT is also known as Massachusetts Institute of Technology. It's really one of the biggest institutes moving the dial for AI research. Well, I think in technology in general, it's really moving the dial, but AI specifically, it really is not just the future, but it's something we're using today. But I don't think we're using it enough. We're using it for things like fraud detection. But there's also, you know, opportunity to use it for curing cancer, which MIT is what it's what really MIT's AI lab is really working on. How can we solve some of the problems that, you know, cancer has been here for so many years and we still don't have a cure? Poverty, climate change. AI really is the answer. And MIT is really the institute that's working towards it. And how I got involved into MIT's AI lab was really, I think, the power of networking is just so amazing. But really through reaching out and being like, you know, I'm ambitious, I'm curious, I want to make a change, and seeing how I could be there and I could fit in to try to try to make an impact in any way I can, specifically with mental health, because that is not an area that's too talked about, mm-hmm. because me- m- mental health specifically is, you know, social media causes mental health issues, which is why technology is so bad with mental health, but that's really not the case. So I think really introducing that to MIT's AI lab is really move them to having me lead their cause with MIT and mental health. Mm-hmm. And why did you want to focus on mental health? I understand you had a personal reason. Mm-hmm. So I was actually in, in, you know, I just started school, high school this year. And as everyone can imagine, COVID has been a, a crazy time for many people. But specifically, there was a student in my school who committed suicide 13 minutes after he tweeted about feeling lonely. And when I saw that, I didn't even hear about it from my school. I heard it on the news. And I saw that and I was like, I knew that person. And if someone were to see that tweet, maybe 13 minutes before he suicided, Mm -hmm. when he tweeted that tweet, maybe he could have still been alive. Because I really believe that suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. And it's not something that people should go to. That really drove me to ask the question, why? Why is it like that? So I reached out to people who were working in the space of social media companies and wanted to understand why this was a reality and why there was not being any action taken towards it. And it was so disheartening and just not encouraging at all to hear that when companies had to say, you know, we care more about the company's reputation and the profit that we make. But mental health is so important, especially times of COVID. 
you know, it's, it's so prevalent. Mental illnesses happen to people who are my friends, my family, even sometimes I'm struggling with mental health. It's so common. And I think there's so many times where friends or like people are, they don't really know how to support someone with mental illness. They don't even know what to do. But I truly believe that technology is something that we can leverage, which is why I really want to work with mental health. We are chatting with Alicia Aurora. She is a 14-year-old Torontonian, an advocate for mental health, who is currently the youngest researcher at MIT's AI lab to help diagnose mental illnesses through machine learning. So Alicia, with that in mind, please tell us how you're leveraging technology like artificial intelligence and machine learning Mm -hmm. to help diagnose mental health issues before it's too late. Artificial intelligence, when I was first introduced to it, I was really fascinated not just with what we could do with artificial intelligence and what's already being done, but with the opportunity of what what could be done. And artificial intelligence, I really believe it is the extension of our human mind. And in AI, there's a subsection um, called machine learning and deep learning. And that's really just the simple term of making machines learn, like really just how our, our brain learns and how we're learning. It's really just doing that with machines. And it really fascinated me specifically with mental health because it's such a mental health and AI is a topic that is so unheard of. And specifically with suicide and detecting suicidal ideation, what I did was is I built a model. I built a model that detected suicidal ideation in text. And how I did that was is that I got over 3 million tweets. I just did a web search of 3 million tweets and trained my model to detect sentiment in those tweets. And how it would do that is, through using the deep learning and different techniques AI has within it, it would detect the sentiment and it would predict an outcome of either on a number scale of how how suicidal a tweet would be. And I got my model up to an 88 to 92 percent accuracy. And, you know, I'm currently working on building it to be even more accurate so I could actually accurately predict high risk, high risk people. So you're looking for keywords? things like, you know, um, kill or suicide or depressed. And you talked about sentiment detection as well. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, as you said, Mark, I think that just finding those words, it's not enough. And that's why artificial intelligence, it's honestly, it's incredible. It fascinates me because it's more than just looking at those words. It's more than just looking at someone writing lonely. But there's so many different techniques in AI. I I, honestly, I Mm -hmm. could be naming them for hours that really that really predict and really make predictions as to if a word is lonely, what could be other possible words that would make, that would make someone feel suicidal that's correlated with lonely. It can also do things where it detects feelings, detects the sentiment. So really how the person was writing that detecting based on, you know, different algorithms. And there's so many different complex things that go into this, but really detecting more than just a simple word, like detecting the actual emotional level, detecting sentiment, detecting similar words, in order to create an accurate prediction. So we don't really, you know, want to mis- mistest someone and tell someone that this tweet is suicidal when it's really not. Yeah, false positive. Mm-hmm. And with with really our model, it, what it does is it really looks into, right now it's an 88 to 92% accuracy, it looks into the more of emotional level and it looks into a lot of complex things to make sure that it's actually accurate. And is this something that could be rolling out soon or is this something for the future that you're helping to work on? Mm-hmm. So right now I've actually been really fortunate because I just want to make this, you know, a passion project and leave it on the side. So I reached out to people at Microsoft and now I'm actually working with a team at Microsoft to actually implement my model and save lives. I didn't just want it to be something I made in my free time and be done with it, but I wanted to implement it. And I think that the awesome opportunity this model has is that it's not just for students, but it can be used for so many other places. I, I, I one in six veterinarians actually commit suicide. And like, who would have thought? Who would have thought, you know, Mm -hmm. one in six veterinarians was actually a suicide. But my goal is to implement this in many places with employees and detecting suicidal ideation in employee conversations, also in school boards, and also in healthcare systems. I think that the opportunity is huge. And it's definitely something, you know, I'm still, it's still a work in progress, but we're now going to be beta testing our model in many different institutions and places in order to ensure that we're providing what's best for people. Amazing. So impressive. Before we wrap up, Alicia, do you have any advice for other young women who may feel they're maybe too young to make a difference? Yes, I think that exactly what you said there, you know, you're never too young to make a difference. And with me, I've had so many times where I felt so discouraged. I talk to people from social Mm -hmm. media companies, and they're like, 
this is never going to work. But what it really takes is not taking no for an answer. You got to keep knocking on doors until they hear you. It's not about you know, knocking on someone's door one time, but it's about showing up 50 times until they remember. That's what really matters. It's so easy for you to believe what other people are going to tell you, but it's hard to challenge that. And that's all it really takes to resilience and to keep knocking on people's doors and not taking no for an answer. And the second part of that is having a passion, a passion for wanting to make the world a better place. And when you have those two things together, I think that the options are limitless. You can really impact a billion people. Wow. Alicia, I am beyond blown away. Keep doing what you're doing. Where can we learn more about your work, by the way, for those interested uh, to see how it's uh, rolling out at the MIT AI Lab? Mm -hmm. So uh, you can actually check out my website, which is aliciaaurora.ca to learn more about my work. And also I have a newsletter. So if you go on my website, I could definitely, you know, if you sign up for my newsletter to get monthly updates on the work that I'm doing and see if there's any ways for you to get involved, because I think that it does not take one person to make an impact. It takes, mm -hmm. it takes a lot of like-minded in individuals and it takes a lot of people with the ambition to make a chain like this and make power like this and make the influence like this keep on going. So really just check out my website and honestly the opportunity and possibilities are from the list. Awesome. Again, it's Alicia Aurora. So A-L-I-S-H-A-A-R-O-R-A yes. dot C-A. Once again, Alicia, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much.